you done that, uh, yes, sir. Okay. So we're going to do a, an interrupted suture now. You need to go in at right angles to the flap. You you uh, make less damage to the flap by going at right angles rather than at an angle. And then you're going to go over three times, pull it through, and then pull the, uh, the knot away from the suture line. That means that if any food gets stuck on it, it doesn't get stuck on the uh, exactly over the uh, suture line. Then under once, then over once. How long do you cut them? You cut them so that you can you can uh, tighten them if you need to. And it's not too long till it irritates the patient. So it's better to make them a little bit too long and then you, you can tighten them and then shorten them later. So you go in with the needle held one third from the swaged end and then you unlock and take it at the swaged end and push it further. You're less likely to bend the needle doing it that way. And you take it with the tissue pickups, pull it through, and then take it one third from the swaged end and put it through the other side of the flap. You do it in two stages. If there's any difficulty, if you can go through both flaps at the same time easily, then you can do that. Then you go over three times, take the end, push it off with your finger, and then pull it tight, cross over. If you can remember whether you picked it up uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise, you then know which way to, to uh, to cross over, under once, over once, and under once. And then the assistant pauses a little shorter, a little longer, and then yes, not cut. Just watch this for a moment. You're going to start with the uh, palm grip. Taking it with the tissue pickups, changing to the standard grip. Pushing it a little bit further. Taking it with the tissue pickups, unlocking, and then using the tissue pickups to help pull the thread through. And then picking up the flap, taking the tip with the tissue pickups, changing to reverse grip, going to this end of the of the at the swage end. I'm pushing it further. And then using the tissue pickups 
to help pull it through. And then come out. Go ahead and do that now. Oh, just one second. Put your, um, put your needle on the work surface. Okay, reverse grip, uh, right-handed. Tissue pickups in the left hand. Take the tip of the needle with the tissue pickups. and take the needle one third from the swathed end with the needle holders. That's a, a needle for veterinary surgery, is it? Uh, don't touch it with your fingers. Don't touch it with your fingers. Just use the needle holders. Okay. Now make sure it's pointing to the left. Yours is pointing to the right, so you need to turn it round. You need to take the tip with the needle holders Oh, is that going to the left? It is going to the left, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, palm grip now. Now, just, just follow the slides now. Don't go any further, okay? So just go into this flap at right angles and come out. Just do that. Okay. Now change to the standard grip and unlock. Now pull the needle through with the tissue pickups. Okay. Take the needle one third from the swaged end. I don't think that's one third, that's almost at the end. Okay. Now go through the next flap. Now use the uh, tissue pickups to help pull the thread through. Take the palm grip in your left hand. That's it. Both hand, move both hands, both hands. Move your right hand as well. That's it. Okay, go in again and then come out. Do the same thing again, but don't take the thread out. Leave the suture in the banana. No. Leave it there, leave it there. 
No, no, no. Oh, you, you haven't been through the other flap. Okay, leave, leave it in there, leave it in there. Did you take it out? No, no, it's been there. Okay. Okay, take the other end with the needle holders, reverse grip. Take the other end. And uh, pull the thread through to the, to the right. Bring your left hand close, bring your right hand close to the, uh, no, I'm sorry, the other way around. Move, um, okay, move your left hand to the left more. Okay, now wind on. Keeping your elbow by your side very well. That's it. Do that once more. I was given some of these uh, yesterday. They they got chili on them. Fantastic, really hot. Okay, watch this now. Use your first finger. And then wind. This is without winding on, okay? Without winding on. Tejas, when you watch the man who's helping you with your surgeries, do you think he needs a lesson in suturing? Yes. Does, yes, he, does he know? Um, he's gone through some of the videos. She. Yeah. Oh. Mm. So, yes. I think uh, practicing this with the banana helps. Yeah. I remember having two maxillofacial surgeons on my suturing course. And they said, I wish they'd taught us this when we learned our maxillofacial surgery. Have you done that, uh, Anand? Take the tips down towards the banana, center of the banana. Okay. Now just watch the video a minute.
Now this time do it winding on, okay? Now that wasn't very good. If you look at that, I'm wasting too much suture. Um, you have to learn how to, I'll show you in a minute. This is where you need to be pulling with your, your left hand a little bit. And the, the needle holders needed to have gone closer to the, uh, the banana. So you don't waste the suture. Okay, go ahead and do that now. Tejas and uh, Ashwin asked me to do some chair side assisting training with his staff. Oh, okay. So we did it yesterday. Um, if that was of any interest to you, just let me know when you want to do it, okay? Sure. I'm getting in uh, some new stuff, so I'll, I'll let you know. Oh, good. Right. We only did yesterday, because he had an emergency patient, we only did uh, holding your left hand out and getting the mirror. And then okay. holding both hands out and getting mirror and the Explorer. Okay. Okay. The next thing we're going to do with him is uh, a blind passing where he collects together 10 or 15 things and passes, they all pass things to him without him seeing. Okay. Okay. Make sure you pull the knot away from the suture line when you do this, okay? Like this. So now you're gonna go over three times. Picking it up over. And then crossing over. Clockwise. Now I should have brought the, the knot away from the line. Perhaps it's better to do that now after locking. At this stage, pull it away. Okay, so I'm, I'm pulling it away at this stage. So it's better not to do it immediately after going over, over, over. Because when you go over, 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 it's holding the flaps together while you do the next uh, throw. And then I'm presenting the knot to be cut by somebody on the left side. Okay, go ahead and do that now. Tejas, what is the uh, COVID situation with you? Almost non-existent. Life's mm. normal and nobody's wearing masks anymore. Mm. So it's almost as if there's no COVID.
I don't think you've wound on enough with your left hand, uh, Anan. Oh, Anna, did you use your finger to cross over? Yeah, use your finger. That's it. So what's happened to the patient flow, uh, Tejas? Uh, say that again. What has happened to your patient flow? It's increased. It has. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Anand, wind on more. I did a gold crown. Just one second. Uh, Anand, you've gone over, over, over three times, and then have you gone under? Yes, sir. You don't need to cross over when you are after you've done the first throw. It's only when you go over, over, over do you need to cross over. I tried to turn, turn, turn around. You... I took it under also. So, do you understand that? Uh, yes, sir, I tried to. I, I tied the third knot also, sir. Final knot okay. also I tied. Yeah, you don't need to do any crossing over after you've done the first over, over, over. When you go under, over, under, you don't cross over. Uh, can you explain that, Tejas? Uh, Anand, the first time, first time that you wind, okay, you cross over, yes, and then you, when you place the second knot, uh, just see how the knot is uh, uh, falling across the suture line, and then you decide whether to cross over or not. If you practice it a few times, you you'll get it. You'll know exactly by just the look of how the threads. Uh, bump together, like they either cluster together or they're neat and parallel to each other. Depending on that, you'll get the idea of whether to cross over or not. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, but once you've crossed over or not crossed over, the first three yes. over, 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 when you go yes. under, you don't need to cross over. When you go over, you don't need to cross over. And finally, when you go under again, you don't need to cross over. It's only when you do it three times, you need to cross over. Okay. Yes. Yes, that makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, now just watch this. Uh... Uh-huh. Do you notice this, um, uh, Tejas? You notice what it's, do you see it, what it says on the screen? Right-handed crossover anti-clockwise. No, above that, can you see it says cannot play media? Uh, yes. This is a problem I'm, I'm having. Um, I have to... Uh, go out and go back in again and we can't um work out why it's happening um a small tip before the session before you start the session or before you start your presentation uh, for any group you might want to restart your computer once and then this this should not happen.
Have you seen that happen before? Yes. It's an error with the Microsoft Office. The computer has uh, played too many video files. Uh, uh, the process has handled too many video files requests. So when going through the presentation again, in the same presentation, it would have played about four or five videos. Then when it com comes across another video, uh, it, it, it shows some kind of an error. So when you minimize it and then go back to play. To avoid this, just restart your computer just before you start a new presentation, a new session anywhere. Uh, I'll give you a big hug if that works. I'll take a big hug either way. No, no, no. You want the, you want the Glen Moranji. Yes. <laughs> And the hug. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so do this one, uh, Anand, taking it under when you uh, when you pick up the end. Okay, take it under. So you're going to cross over anti-clockwise. So is uh, Putin Modi's best friend still? No, right now he's on the fence. He's on the fence. <laughs> Don't touch the needle with your fingers. Use your tissue pickups. My nephew thinks that Putin will either be assassinated or he'll be in The Hague at a war tribunal. Uh, have you come across the, uh, you know, the other side of it where, uh, uh, you know, all of this is, uh, is the media hype that's created by the West. And uh, there's actually justified reasons for Russia invading Ukraine. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes. So and I'll send you some videos. Have a look. You'll be like amazed. You'll probably start liking Putin. Well, it, are they Russian made? No, not Russian made. US made by some people in the US and uh, uh, I'll, I'll send them over, have a look. Mm. I carry on uh, at reverse grip. You know how to use the standard grip. Has that worked? Did it work? Uh, no, sir. So you picked it up over? You picked it up over then? Now come towards you. No, no, you've got to come towards you. Like this, sir. 
I don't know. Did you come round towards you? Yes. Sir. Well, let's see then. Okay, carry on and see if it crosses over correctly. Teaching suturing is frustrating enough when you're actually in the room with the people. Is that worked out? Then cross over the other way. Okay, Jess, when we do the uh, occlusion course in Hyderabad, we need three people Okay. The day before. Okay. To, pra to practice. Okay. So they know how to teach the other people. Okay. Okay. Need to be winding on more. Uh, Did that work? Again, to get over like this. Okay, now go over, go over three times and then stop. Now stop, bring the tweezers towards your chest and then go round and pick it up. Now put the ball of your finger on the thread and cross over anti-clockwise. Did that work? Yes, sir. Congratulations. Now go under once, over once, under once. That's right. Now wind on. First finger. That's it. Unwind once. Go over. Yeah, you don't need to unwind quite so much. You just need to unwind so you've got enough. Eldo's coming over to England in June. Oh, wow. Uh, for, for, yeah. You know, uh, he's a member of this international organization. He's on the oh, committee. Wow. Yeah. It's a whole lot of crap. <laughs> okay, you've gone over, oh, you've got under once, over once. You got to go under once again, have you? Yes, sir. Have you gone on? Uh, uh, under. Under. Yeah. Okay. Do the next next throws you need to do. Okay. You've gone over, 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 and you've gone under. Now you have to go over. Oh, you've done it all. I've done it all. Okay, now now uh, uh, present it so somebody's cutting it on your right. That's correct, okay. Now, when you do it to the person on your left, you have to bring your wrist round, bring the tips towards you, bring the tips towards you and go over the other way. 
Now you need your you need your left hand over the top now. Over the top. Keep your right hand still. Now take the take your no put your right hand back where it was. Put your right hand back where it was. Now bring it round, bring it round. So the tips are pointed towards you. That's it. Now put the thread over the at the other side. Put the thread the other side. Oh no. Okay, move your move your right hand over to the right. To the right. Now put the thread over the top. That's it. You've done it. Okay. Right. Take the thread out now, okay? Now just watch this movie, this uh, video now. What I'm doing here is I'm going through both flaps. And you do this when it's easy to do it. Okay, just do that now, okay? If you're suturing through very thin tissue, don't do that. So how many new staff are you getting, uh, Tejas? I want to get three new staff, but I'm having trouble at the moment finding them. So ideally I want three staff. What happened to the others? They all went home during the pandemic and they are all in a different city. They're not in Hyderabad anymore. Extraordinary. So are you working by yourself? Yes. Currently, my, my son's nanny is doubling up as my chess head assistant. <laughs> and who's looking after your son? He, he's in daycare. So oh. we leave him in daycare. Deepi and I are at the clinic with the nanny, and uh, we head back, pick him up, and come back home. <laughs> Okay. Now we're going to look at the figure of eight suture. Now you do this when there's no flap being raised lingually. Can you imagine if you take a needle and you go through the buckle flap and then you try and get the needle to stick into the, the, the lingual tissue, it's quite likely the needle is gonna tear through the tissue. So instead of doing that, you go through the buckle flap 
you go incidentally without going through any tissue but then you turn the needle round, you come back through the palatal the lingual tissue and then come through incidentally. Okay, so you raise the flap and you go in like this. Let me go back again. You go in one third from the swaged end. And then when you've gone through, you then lock and take it at the swaged end to push it a bit further. And then you take the tip and you bring the uh, suture through. And then you take it at the swaged end. Because then you pull the thread through. And because you're holding it at the swaged end, when you put it through, the tip comes through further so you can see it better. You then take it with the tissue pickups and take it through, and then you turn the needle round so it's pointing it outwards. You then bring all the thread through and you go in on the palatal, the lingual side or the palatal side rather through the uh, papilla. And then you come through and tie the knot. Some of these things, Tejas, I've learned since I started teaching suturing. Okay. And I wish I'd learned them. I wish I'd learned them earlier. Yeah, I wish I'd learned them in dental school. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I may be lecturing at the uh, World Congress in Congress in Delhi sometime next year. Oh, to. Wow. To a prosthodontic group. Oh, okay. Now I'm not going to entitle the lecture what they didn't turn you teach you at your prosthodontic uh, courses, but that's going to be the gist of it. <laughs> I'll yes. show them, for example, the three different size sensors you should be using. Yes. <laughs> um, I'll be showing them how to use electrosurgery. Wow. Um, did you see that presentation I sent the other day? On uh, which one? You sent me a couple of them. On electrosurgery. No, I haven't. Have a look. Okay. It's only about oh. five slides. Okay. Okay. Um, and now you tie the knot. Have you got the message on that, uh, Anand? The mails are yet, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so you go through like this, and you can actually go through the space without going through any lingual tissue. And then you take it through, you then turn it round, and you go through the lingual tissue now. It's easier. And then you tie the knot. Can we just move on a minute? So do we have to uh, raise the lingual flap also? Uh, no, not necessarily. Uh, and and uh, knowing what I know now, I think I would raise it just a little bit. Okay. 
you just take the uh, the sharp end of your of your periosteal elevator and just raise the papilla. Okay. I've got a presentation on that somewhere. I don't know where it is. Okay, watch this now, uh, uh, Anant. You see, I'm not touching the needle with my fingers. So I'm going to go through it. Okay, so I'm going through here like this. I'm turning the needle around. Now tying the knot. Reverse grip. Crossing over. Then under once. Then presenting not to be cut. Okay, go ahead and do that, um, Anand. Do dental assistants have to be registered now in India? No. Because that's the worst thing that's happened in England. Oh, okay. They have to do a course where they don't learn anything that's useful. And... Uh, I don't think in all my career, I can't think of any dental assistant I took on who'd done the, the courses. The first requisite of a dental assistant working with me is whether they can put up with working with me. Uh, how, how did you retain your staff? I want to always ask you that. Uh, because I, I, I'm having trouble retaining them for a long time. I think that's the nature of the game. Um, they say that pay is not a factor. Um, yes, but I think pay is a factor. If it's inadequate. Okay. Um, I 
I think if jewelers had, who were repairing watches, had somebody sitting next to them assisting them, they'd have the same problem. Um, you see now, I think the personality of the dentist is a very big factor. Now, you have a different personality to Eldo. And Eldo keeps stuff. Yes. Um, but I would come to you for a filling. Oh, thank you. You winding on that, uh, and then Eldo could spend two hours a week training his dentist assistants. Some people have their wives doing all the interviewing and, and looking after staff. Oh, really? Mm. I think that's what Anna, uh, Eldo does. Okay, I think I'll, I'll take that tip and let me see. Let me try applying that. Um, You know the difference between delegating and abdicating? Yes. Um, I think probably Eldo abdicates. Oh, okay. So th does that help him keep stuff? <laughs> Pro probably. And Anth, sure. this is just for you and I and Tejas, okay? Yes, sir. What was Eldo like to work for? Uh, it was nice, sir. It was, it was uh, good experience, sir. It's probably a different way of practice, sir, compared to other clinics. Can you elaborate on that? Um, so, like, uh, whatever students are teaching, he tries to implement it in two times. Uh, like, uh, sterilization and all is comparatively better than other kids. Uh, and how the work is distributed among the staffs. There's a lot of things uh, that is. Uh, better than other clinics. That's good. Wow. I didn't know that uh, you were no longer working with uh, Dr. Eldo. I'm serious. I worked for a year. I got to learn a lot of things uh, about uh, how to speak with the patient and to do the treatment, painless injection. That's good. Was he easy to work for? Uh, easy is uh, in the sense like, uh, yes, uh, he, he doesn't uh, ask force to force me to do any any 
particular treatment, but in very silent, sir, like uh, he gives it freedom to. What was that, he Elder? A lot he doesn't. What's he saying, Tejas? He gives a lot of free hand uh, to his staff. He does what? Give them a free hand to do treatment plans. Mm -hmm. And doesn't force treatment plans um, you know, on his staff. In the sense, like he will, he will ask me to do a particular thing. Uh, it's, it's comfortable working with him. He says some uh, something if, if it's not proper, he guides us how to do it next time better. Uh, maybe how we mingle with the patient or. Uh, how we are uh, doing a particular procedure. He just uh, tells us how to improve, do it in a different way. That way I got to learn a lot of things. Uh, those shops are pages who used to share, share it with us, discuss it with so us. Uh, you see, it's my suspicion, and I may be totally wrong, that Eldo lets a new person do what they want to do. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Without necessarily showing them what to do. So, do you know that Ashwin's taken on an associate? Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Who he doesn't pay. Oh, wow. How, how do you do one of those? <laughs> Um, she's the daughter of somebody in his his uh, church group. I think it's a scandal how many dentists are produced in India, isn't it? Are there That's too true. many? Hmm. They are too many. Hmm. The problem is they're all located in the cities. Hmm. Are there dental schools in the country? Yes, but once uh, dentists pass out, they head to the city and practice. Hmm. I uh, gave a lecture in Kerala in some dental school where the students, they had a, a, a boy's uh, dormitory and a girl's dormitory and they were locked at 7.30 in the evening. Wow. Mm. And that was only uh, that was only three years ago or four years ago. What time okay, is it with you? So on that note, it's time for me to sign out. Mm. What time is it? Ten fifteen. Yeah. Mm. 
Um, Are uh, Friday evenings the best time for you, Tejas, or does it make any difference whether it's Thursday evening? Uh, Fridays are better. Thursdays are also okay. Thursdays are fine as well. Or I would prefer Friday, though. Hmm. We seem to be having difficulty in having sort of everybody joining. I'm not quite sure why that's just coincidence or what. Okay. Let's put it out in the group and uh, take a consensus on that. Hmm. How would you... Uh, Word that. Take a poll on, uh, you know, whether we should do it Thursdays or Fridays, and how many people would prefer what. Yeah. And by the way, the the Wiseag Dentist Group have uh, answered the survey. I'll send you the results over. I'll email you. Hmm. How does it look? Interesting. Yes. In what way? Have a look. Uh, a lot of people have answered a lot of different uh, uh, preferences. The preferences are quite varied. A lot of people have answered interest uh, in, in implants. They've expressed interest in implants. Mm. Very, very few people have expressed interest in sterilization and practice development. It's, it's interesting. Let's have a look. I'll send mm. it to you. Right. Okay. We'll have to see um, who's interested in joining next week and whether we do uh, more on suturing or not. Yes. Okay. And Ant, you get the prize for the most uh, attendee person. And uh, thank you for joining us, Tejas. It uh, helps to have more than one person. Although I'm happy to teach Tejas uh, and Ant by himself if necessary. Thank you. So, Anand, nice to see you today. Say it again. Nice to see you, Anand. Thank you, Stuart. I'll okay. uh, look forward to hearing more from Anand. And I'll connect with you shortly. I'll send you the responses to the survey. Yeah. Okay. All right, then. Cheers. Signing off. Cheers, and Cheers, Anand. Yeah. Yeah.